Horseback Riding Six Quick Ways to Master Your Equestrian and Equitation Skills in 30 Minutes Introduction This book contains proven steps and strategies on how to master your equestrian and equitation skills in 30 minutes, before taking any free lessons. An art of horseback riding is fun, exciting, challenging, demanding and rewarding. This art of horseback riding performed in English style is known as equitation and anything related to equitation is famous for equestrian sports. Horseback riding requires proper training before participating safely and efficiently in this sport. This ebook gives a thorough knowledge of equestrian and equitation skills divided in form of six chapters to master horseback riding in 30 minutes before taking any free lessons. Once you read this ebook, horses may become a passion of your life. Chapter 1 Basics of Equitation An art of horseback riding is fun, exciting, challenging, demanding, and rewarding. This art of horseback riding performed in English style is considered as equitation and anything related to equitation is famous for equestrian sports. Horseback riding requires proper training before participating safely and efficiently in this sport. This ebook gives a thorough knowledge of equestrian and equitation skills divided in form of six steps to master horseback riding in 30 minutes before taking any free lessons. Once you read this ebook, Horses may become a passion of your life. Mind and body of a horse. Horses are beautiful creatures that can easily be tamed and trained once you understand their language. Horses are brilliant because they have survived for millions of years and are still in fashion. In order to understand the mind and body of a horse you must learn to be friendly with this high-speed beast. In the world of horseback riding, the rider and the horse unite as one. They learn to communicate with each other. The body of a horse is designed as an amazing machine of speed, agility, and survival. The lightning speed of a horse turns its heavy body into a dime. An incredible hearing sense of a slightest sound and quick reaction to it makes the horse a very useful creature. The mechanics of a horse must be understood in depth to get the most benefit of your friendly beast. The communication between the rider and his equine is the actual bond that abides both of them. The horse obeys its master based on the level of communication. To communicate well with horses you need to see the world through a horse perspective. Dirt, hay and other horses make their world instead of the internet, computers, or mobile phones that make our world. A thorough understanding of their world makes you a better rider and enjoy being around these neat animals. Think like a horse. To know your equine you must think like a horse. Think about having a large 1,000 pounds body that is fragile enough to get injured at one wrong move, consider high speed. A horse is a social animal as it likes to be around other horses a lot and in the form of a herd. This is the reason that the horse allows a human to ride its back. It considers human as a dominant member of its herd. Horses react dramatically in unfamiliar situations and act upon instinct. To understand the expression of a horse you must understand its body language. Horses express themselves to humans in same way they communicate with other horses. You must learn to understand their expressed signals and interpret them properly. Relaxed, a horse must be in relaxed position if you are thinking to ride it. In relaxed position the head of a horse is hanging downwards and feels comfortable in the given environment. Afraid, an afraid horse's head is held up in the air that means the horse is scared of something. It can be even you. It shows the whites of its eyes. Try to calm down the horse and then think about riding it. Threatening, a horse exhibiting bad behavior can be based on many reasons. Either the horse is not in mood to be ridden or the horse can be in severe pain. Sometimes the horse is feeling hungry and not given proper diet. Horse gives this expression by showing its teeth and pinning its ears to the head. Alert, a horse gives an alert expression by keeping its head high wide open eyes and ears in forward position. 
it may be hearing the sound of someone approaching. It can turn into a good or a bad expression depending on the comfort level of the horse. Remember to stay fair with your horse by expressing your emotions clearly to it. Do not treat it like your other human fellows. Show your confident behavior to the horse to make it realize that you are the boss. Keep your movements slow around it because you do not want to scare or alert it by your quick actions. Similarly, talk in a soothing voice around them. Do not yell or scream. Instead, keep the high tone reserved for an action to make it alert. You also need physical to ride a horse in a calm of state of emotion. The physical the worst beauty thing you is can do is try to ride a horse when you are feeling the angry elegant or and graceful body of a horse, horse is extremely can powerful read your emotions, so creature. never be afraid in front of it. An understanding of a horse positively about is the things necessary you want to your find horse a good to do equine instead for of yourself. the things you do not want from it. The horses with good conformation have straight legs from the front and the back. Their shoulders and croups, rump, are nicely sloped. The shape of their heads is pleasing to the eye. Their height is measured in hands and a good healthy horse is usually of 14.2 hands to 16.1 hands. This height of a horse is best for women. Men prefer to ride a rather taller horse than this height. Smaller horses do not injure much if you fall when riding them. An average weight of a good conformation horse is 1,000 pounds to 1,200 pounds. A heavy horse can carry a heavy person easily. A person can ride a horse in various speeds. The speed of a horse depends upon the type of gait. Here are mentioned four types of gait that most of the horses possess. Walk. When a horse is walking, it creates a four-beat rhythm by putting each foot down one at a time. The walking speed of a horse is about three to four miles per hour. Trot. A horse trot at a two-beat rhythm by putting one front foot down and the opposite hind foot down at the same time. Most horses trot at the speed of 7 to 10 miles per hour. Canter, one hind leg of a horse strike the ground first in canter gait. Then it strikes the other hind foot and the opposite front foot together to the ground. Finally comes down the other fore leg of the horse. This gait creates a three-beat rhythm sound and makes the horse canter at the speed of 10 to 17 miles per hour. Gallop, a horse gallop in the same way of canter gait but with an extra foot hitting the ground and making a four-beat rhythm. It travels at 30 to 40 miles per hour in the galloping state. Horses are categorized on the basis of their breeds. Some of the popular breeds of horses are mentioned here based on the characteristics and the usage of the horses. Appaloosa breed of horses is used in Western riding events and known for its spotted patterns. Arabian horses are famous for elegance and strong stamina. They are high-spirited and presented in endurance competitions. Morgan is an American horse that is shorter in height but maintain a strong body. It makes a great trail horse. Paint horses come with specific patterns such as light or dark patches on a contrasting light or dark base. They also make good trail horses and appear in western shows. Quarter horse is an easygoing, quiet and forgiving horse. It is considered best for the beginners trying to learn horseback riding. It is the most popular breed and presented in cattle work competitions. Saddlebred horses have a flashy appearance and easy to ride because of their smooth gait. They make an excellent show and fall in the category of gait horses that possess a gait not common in other horses. Standardbred horses have strong legs and they trot at high speed of 30 miles per hour. They are best to train for horse racing events. Tennessee walking horse has a distinct look with straight head and large ears. It is also a gait horse and gives the rider a feeling of floating on air when riding it. Thoroughbred is a race track horse and the fastest horse in the world. They have long legs. They are great jumpers and can gallop at the speed of 40 miles per hour. Train yourself for riding. The physical appearance of a person matters a lot when it comes to horseback riding. 
A person needs to train his body before plunging to ride the horse. He requires stamina, strength, endurance, average to ideal weight and proper exercise for flexibility. Similarly preparing your mind for the horse riding is very important by maintaining confidence and consistency. Banish any fearful thoughts by thinking positive and approaching your ride slowly. The act of balancing yourself is also very important when starting to practice from walk gait to the trot gait. The faster the speed of the horse, the more stamina, strength, balance and flexibility is required by you. Lighten your weight by losing some extra pounds. An ideal weight relationship of a rider and a horse is that the equine must carry only 20% of its weight. So if your weight is any greater than 200 pounds, as per the average 1,000 pound weight of most horses, then it may cause strain on your horse. It is also difficult to fit on a standard-sized saddle if you carry a heavy body. It also gets uncomfortable for you to ride on a smaller saddle of the horse. Your upper body strength is required to get on the horse's saddle for riding. If the weight of your upper body is heavy then it may cause fatigue when you get on and off the horse. An obese structure of the body cannot endure strenuous riding activity. Riding a horseback requires energy and stamina. So it is important to maintain a healthy body before starting to ride a horse. Get in shape one must do some weight loss and stamina build up exercises. You can develop endurance by the help of aerobic exercises and focus on strengthening the muscles of your body. Do arm curl, triceps extension, shoulder press and push-ups to strengthen the arms. Knee curl, leg lift and hamstring curl are some of the best exercises for the strengthening of legs. Similarly, crunches, reverse curls and diagonal crunches help create strong muscles of your abdomen. Yoga and Pilates increase flexibility and strength of your body. For some extra flexibility, stretch your neck, lower back, inner thighs, hamstring and quadriceps. These exercises may not only build your stamina but as well as increases the flexibility of your body. Safety Precautions Protecting yourself around horses is a major element of training that cannot be overlooked. Horses are gentle animals but accidents can happen. The injuries during horseback riding or at the ground can be fatal. Imagine an injury that may occur if you jump out of your car at a speed of 30 miles per hour. Same is the case when you are riding a horse. So it is important to learn the safety protocol before horseback riding. Safe clothing is important to wear around horses. It helps you protect from errant hooves, nasty chafing and falls to the ground. Tight. Well-fitted and tucked-in cotton shirts are best as they do not get caught in various parts and keep your body cooler and drier. English show helmet is required to be wore by the rider during hunt seat and dressage shows. Only an equestrian helmet can protect you from head injury if fallen at a high speed from the horse. Riding boots are especially made for equestrian riding. They have a special heel to protect your foot from slipping through the stirrup when riding and protect your leg from trapping in the stirrup. Remove jewelry when you are around horses. Refrain yourself from wearing any bracelets, hanging earrings, necklaces, big rings and bangles. Standing position is important when dealing with horses. Do not stand between a horse and an immovable object. Horse is a big animal and it can easily step on you. So keep a safe distance and an accurate position when dealing with horses. Awareness of your presence is important if you are thinking to approach a horse from behind. A horse can get frightened easily and its reaction may cause an injury to you. Use safety restraints when tying a horse and tie up a safety knot to the horse to a hitching post. A safety knot helps to release a lead rope of a panicking horse quickly. Check your tack before you saddle up on the horse. Make sure the bridle fits properly and all the buckles of bridle, girth, and stirrup leathers are secured and positioned well. Chapter 2 Equestrian Riding Style and Gear 
Europeans have been riding horses for centuries, both in battles and sports. This riding discipline is associated with elite class and all the rich British people in Hollywood movies. Also, this English style is followed by Prince Charles and Camilla to ride horses. This discipline is featured in all equestrian events and famous for equestrian riding style. Equestrian sport is divided into two main sub-categories such as hunt seat and dressage show. Equestrian tack and apparel. Equestrian saddles are of two types used for the hunt seat and dressage. These saddles are also considered as flat saddles and a lot lighter in weight than the heavy western saddles. The horse wears a contoured pad under hunt seat saddle and a lightweight square pad under dressage saddle. The bridle of equestrian riders consists of brow band and nose band. They also provide extra room for accessories to add flashy items to the horse's bridle. Mostly they use braided reins that are attached to the equestrian bridle. The apparel for the two types of equestrian show is different for the English riders but when they are practicing, the apparel is similar in both disciplines. These two types of apparel are different to describe the particular riding style associated with the equestrian tradition. Hunt seat apparel. This clothing consists of breeches, a rat catcher shirt, a tailored jacket and long boots. Finally an equestrian helmet finishes off the apparel. Dressage apparel. This apparel is similar to the hunt seat apparel in low-level dressage shows. However in high-level dressage shows the apparel is totally different from the hunt seat clothing. It consists of white breeches, a white shirt, a dark jacket with tails, a black derby and tall boots. This is the formal apparel for upper-level dressage shows. Horses for Equestrian Events The breed types of horses used in equestrian events are mostly thoroughbreds and warmbloods. Other types such as Appaloosas, Quarter Horses and Paints are also ridden in equestrian shows. These horses are mostly taller and lean. Their conformation is uphill that is the withers, a point where its shoulders come together, of these horses are higher than the point of their hips. However, almost all types of horses are suitable for the equestrian sport and the equestrian saddle fits easily to any of these horses. Equestrian horses are well trained. This training involves to teach them two things. They learn specific ways to be collected and on the bit. To be collected is referred to as a peculiar way of teaching a horse to hold itself in a certain way and drive in forward movement from behind. On the bit is referred to as responding through the line of connection that is bridle in the hands of a rider. These two training methods are used to show various activities in equestrian events. For instance in hunt seat event, the rider asks his horse to jump. Also, the horse is trained to trot in place to perform a specific dressage show maneuver. This training of horses is based on understanding the rider's signals to speed up and slow down at each gate. Types of Equestrian Saddle Equestrian saddles are smaller and lighter in weight and volume. They set the rider's weight directly on the back of horse and sometimes it is difficult to keep the balance and stay on the saddle because it is more flat in shape than the western deep saddle. Equestrian saddles come in different shapes and sizes based on different shoulder widths of horses. Their color may also vary from dark brown to black. All-Purpose Saddle an all-purpose saddle consists of a flap that is cut far forward to assist riders in jumping if required. Riders, who do a lot of trail riding and basically when not much jumping is required in flat work, an arena that doesn't involve jumping, in the hunt seat show, often prefer to use an all-purpose saddle. It can also be used for jumping in the arena if required. An all-purpose saddle is also perfect for trail riding than other types of equestrian saddles because its seat is slightly deeper and keeps the position of the rider less forward. Close Contact Saddle A close contact saddle provides close contact in between the rider and the horse. It is best for jumping in the arena during hunt seat show. 
The rider can easily give cues to his equine because the saddle interferes minimum when riding in equestrian style. The hunt seat riders use this saddle to assist in forward position that is essential in jumping. The shallow seat of saddle makes it easy for the rider to lift himself out of the seat when jumping an obstacle. Dressage Saddle A dressage saddle is used by those equestrian riders who learn the discipline of dressage. Dressage saddle is necessary for an upper-level dressage show. However, Riders mostly use all-purpose saddle in lower-level dressage show. Dressage saddles are designed in deep seat shape to provide the rider a deeper seating position on the horse. Stirrups are slightly longer in dressage saddle than the all-purpose saddle and the close contact saddle. Stirrups are wore by rider in dressage show. It has more squared flaps than the rounder flaps found in other saddles. Types of Equestrian Saddle Pads Equestrian saddle pads vary in sizes and shapes as per the requirement of a specific saddle used for riding a horse. It is a necessary element and required for all types of equestrian saddles. It fits between the saddle and the horse. It helps to protect the horse's back from chafing and saddle sores. It aids in distributing the whole weight of the rider on the horse's back. The shape and thickness of the saddle pads are different because of the difference in pressure points of various saddles. All-purpose and close contact pads. All-purpose saddle and close contact saddle have almost similar shape and therefore use the same pad made of fleece or synthetic material. This pad is about one inch thicker and helps distribute the weight of the rider on the horse's back. It is mostly available in white and off-white colors. It protects the horse's back, absorbs the sweat and gives a room for breathing to the equine. Dressage Pads Dressage pads are found in square shape and made of cotton material. They do not provide much cushion between the saddle and the horse. They still distribute the weight of the rider on the back of horse. Its thickness is half of an inch and protects horse's back from chafing. It keeps the saddle sweat free and found mostly in white color. However, solid colors and other patterns can also be found in dressage pads. Equestrian Bridle A bridle is a necessary gear used by a rider to communicate with his equine. Rider gives instructions to the horse by using it and directs it in required direction. It is available in leather material and dark colors mostly. A bridle consists of three major parts. Bit or substitute it is a piece that fits inside the mouth of a horse. A substitute band is used instead of the bit to put pressure on the nose instead of the mouth of horse. There are three types of equestrian bits that are snaffle, weymouth and full cheek snaffle. Headstall, it is that part of bridle that goes over the horse's ears and connects to the rein. It includes a crown piece and cheeks piece to naturally go over horse's crown and cheeks. It has a brow band that goes across the forehead, a throat latch that attaches under the jowl of horse and a nose band that goes across the nose and under the jaw. There are buckles on the straps for adjustability. There are two types of headstalls available in equestrian bridle that are dressage double bridle and single rein. O dressage double bridle is used by the riders who are participating in upper level of dressage shows. It consists of two sets of reins. This is why it is called double bridle. Each set of rein corresponds to a different bit so the rider uses each rein for individual purposes. O single rein headstall consists of a single headstall strap, throat latch, brow band, and nose band. The bridle uses one rein that is attached on one side of the bit. Then it goes over the neck of the horse and attaches to the other side of the bit. The bit used in single rein is mostly snaffle bit. Hunt seat riders and lower level dressage riders use this single rein headstall in equestrian sports. Reins, the straps of leather that are held by the rider to signal the horse to move in certain direction are called reins. Chapter 3. Prepare Yourself and the Equine for Riding 
It is time to prepare yourself and the horse for equestrian riding. You may learn here the ways to approach a horse, halter it and take its lead. Get to know the easy ways to put saddle on your horse and bridle it. The tricks to mount and dismount yourself on and off the horse. These techniques may teach you to become a friend of this beautiful beast and take the lead to make it follow your orders. Approach a horse. A horse in a stall or paddock, a closed fence area, is easy to approach and halter than a horse in a green pasture. It means like going to the horse and halter it without facing any problem. This approach to the horse is easy for the beginners once they learn the following step-by-step -step method. 1. Take your halter to the horse with a lead rope attached to it. 2. Talk to your horse to make it aware of your presence. If the horse is facing away from you then make sure the horse sees you first and then you approach the horse. 3. Approach the horse from the left side of its shoulder instead of approaching from its head when you enter the stall or paddock. For when you get close to the horse then extend your hand with the palm facing downwards and let the horse sniff your hand. 5. Take the lead rope and loop it around the horse's neck. 6. Slip the halter over the head of the horse and buckle up the straps that comes from behind the ears of horse. Halter a horse. A properly trained horse offers no resistance when you slip a halter on its head. Halter and the lead rope are important tools that let us handle horses on the ground. The difficult part is to figure out which strap of halter goes where on the head of horse. Keenly observe a halter on a horse's head before attempting to halter the horse. The best way is to imagine your horse head in front of you then hold the halter as if the horse is wearing it already. This makes it much easier to put a halter on your horse's head. 1. Stand in the same direction your horse is standing at the side of its left shoulder. 2. Then to secure the horse and to keep it from walking away, put the lead rope around the middle of the horse's neck in a form of loose loop and hold it firm in your right hand. 3. Make sure that the crown strap of halter is not buckled up. It is that piece of halter that goes around the horse's ears and buckles at the left cheek of it. For now, it is time to slip the nose of horse through the noseband by reaching your right hand under the neck of horse. This step can be done easily if you hold the crown strap in your right hand and the buckle side of the strap in your left hand. 5. Bring the crown piece up behind the ears of horse and buckle it reasonably, that is not too tight and not too loose, to fit the halter comfortably on the horse. 6. Now fold the lead rope in your left hand twice from around the neck of horse and hold the attached rope just below the halter in your right hand firmly. Lead a horse. Once you halter a horse then you can lead it out of the stall or paddock either to tie it up or to put a saddle on it. To lead your horse in safe manner it is important to understand and follow the given steps properly. 1. Stay on the left side of your horse. 2. Hold the end of the rope in your right hand closest to the head of horse with your thumb pointing upwards. 3. Fold the lead rope and hold it in your left hand. Avoid to coil the rope around your hand because if the horse pulls back then the rope can tighten up and trap your hand inside it. For before you move forward and lead the horse, try standing at a little distance from this large body equine. It is important so that the horse may not step into you. Hold the rope by holding your hand out and stand beside the horse facing in forward direction. 5. Now start walking and give a gentle pull to the rope attached to the halter of horse. The horse may interpret it as a command and try to keep its pace so it may walk with you still staying at its shoulder. 6. To turn the horse in a specific direction, first maintain a specific distance then pull your right hand to the left direction or push your right hand to the right direction to order it to make a turn with you. 7. The horse is now following your lead and if you wish to stop then just say a word, whoa, to warn it and stop by giving a slight backward tug to the rope with your right hand. Horses can easily read your body language so when leading a horse do not look at it, instead look straight ahead to your path. This way horse can set its confidence on you and may follow your lead instead of getting confused where to step.
Also the horse is a big animal and stopping or turning is not as easy for it as it is for you. So give the horse a slight signal of where to turn and when to stop before acting upon it. Saddle a horse. It takes practice to tack up a horse especially when it comes to put a saddle on it. It is important to make sure the saddle fits right to the back of horse because you do not want to slip off when you are riding. The saddle may also hurt the horse if not positioned accurately when fastening it to the horse's back. Before you put saddle on the horse's back take account of the following three precautions. 1. Make sure that the horse is tied up securely by its halter to a hitching post. 2. Groom your horse by brushing down the hair on its back and girth area to make sure there is no dirt, bedding or other things stuck to these areas. 3. Keep an eye for any hidden sticky objects underneath your saddle and the saddle pad. Now you can move on to the following step-by-step -step method of putting an equestrian saddle on your horse safely as described below. One first step is to lay the saddle pad on the back of horse. To make this happen, stand on the left side of horse and lay the front of saddle pad covering a few inches of the withers of horse that is positioned at the base of horse's neck. Two now pick up the saddle by holding the front of it in your left hand and the back in your right hand. Do not let the stirrups to hang down when you are holding it. Three to set the saddle on the horse's back. Place it gently in the hollow just below the horse's withers. For slide the girth straps on the left side of saddle through the tab of saddle pad to attach saddle with the pad. Follow the same step on the other side of the saddle. 5. There are three girth straps on an equestrian saddle. Fasten the two girth straps to the right side of saddle. The third strap is present just in case one of the other straps breaks. Follow the same procedure to the left side of saddle by grasping the girth straps from underneath the horse. 6. Make sure the length of stirrup is correct according to your height before you mount on the horse. Bridle a horse. The tack that goes on last is the bridle. You cannot tie up your horse again once you bridle it. Make sure to tie the horse securely to a hitching post by its halter before you bridle it. Groom your horse and saddle it properly then unbuckle the noseband and throat latch. Now follow the given steps to put the bridle on the horse. 1. First unbuckle the halter, slide off the noseband of the horse's head and then rebuckle the halter around its neck. 2. Put the reins over the head of horse so they can lie on the its back. 3. Stand on the left side of your horse's head by holding the bit and the headstall. Face the same direction your horse is facing. For place your right hand, still holding the headstall, just above the horse's head that is right in front of its ears. 5. Open the mouth of horse and insert the bit. 6. Slide the headstall over the ears of horse gently. 7. Now buckle the throat latch and the noseband tightly but not too tight that you cannot insert three fingers between them and the horse. 8. Finally, Unbuckle the halter from the neck of horse and lead it by reins to the mounting position. Equestrian Mounting and Dismounting Mounting and dismounting in equestrian style can be easy if you use a higher ground or mounting block to mount yourself on the saddle and only a solid higher level ground to dismount yourself off the saddle because mounting blocks can tip over easily. Make sure all the buckles are fastened and the straps are not worn out at any place of the saddle. Keep an eye on the perfect adjustment of the saddle and saddle pad onto the back of horse. Mounting on the saddle. To mount in equestrian style follow the given steps. 1. Position yourself at the left shoulder of horse by facing to its side and stay in control of the horse by holding reins in your left hand. Grab a handful of the horse's mane at the base of its neck by the same hand. 2. Hold the stirrup iron and turn it towards yourself using your right hand. Then place your left foot in the stirrup. 3. Grasp the cantle in your right hand and bounce on your right leg two or three times. Then swing your right leg by supporting your body more from the leg than using strength of your arms to jump over the horse's body and into the saddle without touching it. 4. Finally place your right foot in the stirrup and adjust the reins. 
Dismounting off the saddle. To dismount yourself off the saddle in equestrian style follow the given steps. 1. Bring your horse in complete stationary position. 2. Take out your right foot from the stirrup and hold the reins in your left hand and grab the mane of horse at the base of its neck with the same hand. 3. Swing your right leg over the headquarters of horse without touching its body. 4. Turn so that your stomach is flat against the side of saddle. 5. Remove your left foot from the stirrup and slide down slowly until your feet touch the ground. Chapter 4. Learn Skills of Equestrian Riding. The most interesting work starts now. Learn to discover the correct way of riding a horse in various gait like walk, trot, and canter. Further you can polish your skills by working on jumping tips and tricks. There is much more to just learning the skills of riding a horse. You can also practice to participate in equestrian events such as hunt seat and dressage shows. Ride the walk in hunt seat. Riding the walk in hunt seat is primarily used to warm up to the faster gait. It is good for beginners to practice on the walk gait. It helps the rider to develop balance and rhythm with the horse. Body posture. Hunt seat is a formal riding type that requires a specific position in the saddle. The challenge is to stay relaxed and ride freely with the rhythm of horse by maintaining your position properly. In hunt seat riding, the body position is slightly forward with a gentle bend on hips. Keep the shoulders in squared position and elbows close to your body. Keep your chip up and eyes straight looking ahead on the way you are going. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in your both hands by facing your palms down in hunt seat. The reins go between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger making a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands 2 to 3 inches apart from each other. Hold the reins 3 inches above the horse's withers. The elbow angle should be greater than 120 degrees so that a person looking from side can draw a straight line from the bit of horse to your elbow. Ask a horse to walk. Ask a horse to walk in hunt seat by giving it cues using your leg pressure. Squeeze your legs to signal the horse to move forward by your calves. Do not squeeze your legs to give a cue to the horse with your knees. You can also use your voice to encourage the horse to walk in hunt seat. You can make a clucking voice to communicate with the horse. To make a left turn keep the tension on the rein with your left hand and apply pressure with your outside leg and vice versa to make a turn to the right. When the turn is made, loosen the pressure but do not take off your legs from the horse's body. Moving with the horse Keep your position forward and balanced when walking with a hunt seat horse. Feel the movement of the horse beneath you and keep your hips relaxed. Pay attention to your legs when the horse is walking. Do not let your legs slide forward or backward. Just keep them behind the girth. Ride the walk in dressage. Walk is considered an important gait at dressage especially if you are participating in lower levels. It requires most maneuvers at this gait if you are thinking to compete in future. It also requires a specific positioning of your body, hands, legs and cues to perform the walk gait. Body Posture Dressage requires the following body posture when performing the walk gait. Rider sits deep in the saddle while performing walk gait in dressage. Keep the shoulders open, square, and relax. Maintain a body posture of flat and straight back. Keep your chip up and eyes straight looking at your way ahead. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in two hands and your palms facing downwards in dressage. The reins go between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger making a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands three to four inches apart from each other. Hold the reins two inches above the shoulders of horse. Keep a slight tension in reins so that you have contact with the horse's mouth. Ask a horse to walk. Ask a horse to walk in dressage by giving it cues with your leg pressure. 
put pressure by your calves and not by your knees. As the horse responds to your command then loosen the pressure of your calves. Make sure to maintain a communication line with the horse by keeping the calves in touch with it. Do not take them completely off the horse body. In dressage you cannot use your voice to command the horse to perform the walk gait. To make a left turn keep the tension on the rein with your left hand and apply pressure with your outside leg and vice versa to make a turn to the right. When the turn is made, loosen the pressure but do not take off your legs from the horse's body. Moving with the horse. Make your movement with the horse look effortless because you are sitting deep in the saddle. Maintain your balance and let your hips rock with the movement of horse but keep your body posture as described above for the walk gait in dressage. Ride the trot in hunt seat. Riding the trot in hunt seat is primarily used when the rider is trying to figure out how to jump. Trot gait is also used a lot in the show ring and on the trail. It helps the rider to learn balance with the ups and downs of the bouncy gait of horse. They can also learn to rise up and down in the saddle with the rhythm of gait. This rise and fall of the rider in the saddle is called posting the trot. And the rider who balances in the saddle is called sitting the trot. Posting the trot is most often used by riders in hunt seat and is much easier as compared to sitting the trot. Body posture. Posting and sitting the trot both requires the same body posture. The challenge is to stay relaxed and ride freely with the rhythm of horse by maintaining your position in proficient manner. It takes time to learn both types of trot gait in hunt seat. In hunt seat riding, the body position is more forward with a bend on hips and not at the waist. When you are sitting in the saddle then your weight is on your seat bones and not on the hips. Your weight rises up and out of the saddle when you are posting. Keep your shoulders in squared position and elbows close to your body. Keep your chip up and eyes straight looking ahead on the way you are going. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in two hands and your palms facing downwards in dressage. The reins go between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger making a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands two to three inches apart from each other. Hold the reins two inches above the withers of horse. The position of hands is a bit lower than it was at the walk gait. This gives more room to the horse's neck to extend for the trot gait. Keep a slight tension in reins so that you have contact with the horse's mouth. Place your both hands on the horse's neck to give the horse's head a little freedom of movement. Ask a horse to trot. Ask a horse to trot and hunt seat by giving it cues with your leg pressure. Put pressure by your calves and not by your knees. As the horse responds to your command and starts the trot gait then relax your calves a little. Make sure to maintain a communication line with the horse by keeping your calves in touch with it. Do not take them completely off the horse's body. In dressage you cannot use your voice to command the horse to perform the trot gait. To make a left turn keep the tension on the rein with your left hand and apply pressure with your outside leg and vice versa to make a turn to the right. When the turn is made, let go a little of the pressure but do not take off your legs from the horse's body. Moving with the horse. Keep your position forward and balanced when performing the trot gait with a hunt seat horse. Feel the movement of the horse beneath you and keep your hips relaxed. Pay attention to your legs when the horse is walking. Do not let your legs slide forward or backward. Just keep them behind the girth. Ride the trot in dressage. The riders are required to perform a number of maneuvers in the trot gait to pass the official dressage tests. They use trot at all levels of a dressage competition. Much of your early training is required to ride the trot. Proper alignment and specific movements can make you ride the trot gait in dressage. Body posture. Body posture and its position is very important in dressage. It is used to send the message to the horse to perform certain maneuvers in trot. 
In higher levels the ability to communicate with the horse by using your body becomes more imperative. Dressage requires the following body posture when performing the trot gait. Rider sits deep in the saddle when performing the trot gait in dressage. His weight lies on his seat bones and he sink deep in the saddle. Keep the shoulders open, square, and relax. Maintain a body posture of flat and straight back. No arch should be seen from any angle. Keep your chip up and eyes straight looking at your way ahead. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in two hands and your palms facing downwards in dressage. The reins go between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger making a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands two to three inches apart from each other. Hold the reins two inches above the withers of horse. This gives more room to the horse's neck to extend for the trot gait. Keep a slight tension in reins so that you have contact with the horse's mouth. Place your both hands on the horse's neck to give the horse's head a little freedom of movement. Ask a horse to trot. Ask a horse to change its gait from walk to the trot and dressage by giving it cues with your leg pressure. Put pressure by your calves and not by your knees. As the horse responds to your command and starts the trot gait then relax your calves a little. Make sure to maintain a communication line with the horse by keeping the calves in touch with it. Do not take them completely off the horse's body. In dressage you cannot use your voice to command the horse to perform the trot gait. To make a left turn keep the tension on the rein with your left hand and apply pressure with your outside leg and vice versa to make a turn to the right. When the turn is made loosen the pressure but do not take off your leg from the horse's body. Moving with the horse. You can either post or sit when the horse is trotting in dressage. Posting is also known as rising to the trot in dressage. It is easier to move in posting with the horse. To ask the horse for an extended trot use the posting. Sit the trot when you are asking the horse for a collected trot. Ride the canter in hunt seat. Canter gait is the most exciting and enjoyable ride for the new learners. It is a smooth and fastest gait of the horse. Canter gives you a sensation of being one with the horse when speed is combined with rhythm in this three-beat gait. It is an important gait in hunt seat once you advance in riding the horse. Body posture. It is important to follow the body posture guidelines properly when you are riding the canter in hunt seat. Lean forward with a greater degree of bend from your hips when you are riding the canter gait. Hold your hands one inch above the neck of horse. This placement of hands gives more freedom to the head and neck of horse in movement. There appears a natural arch in your back when riding the canter gait and rest of your back is flat. Keep your elbows close to your body, shoulders back and chin up. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in your both hands. The reins go between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger making a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands two to three inches apart from each other and an inch above the neck of horse. Keep them also in front of the horse's withers that is towards the head of horse. Your reins should not be too tight. Keep them snug against the mouth of horse. Ask a horse to canter. Ask a horse to change its gait from trot to canter in hunt seat by moving inside rein that is closest to the center of arena. Give it a slight tot by moving it up, back and out, all at the same time. Keep your outside rein, closest to the rail, slightly slack. Squeeze your outside calf to apply pressure to the horse's body as you move the inside rein. Maintain the pressure until the horse begins to canter and then relax your inside leg by keeping in touch with the horse's body. You can also encourage the horse to canter by making a kissing noise from your mouth in hunt seat. Moving with the horse. Lift your body up and slightly out of the saddle when the horse canter in hunt seat. It is considered a half-seat position. 
Find the three-beat rhythm of horse and adapt your body by moving with it. Note that if you ask an instructor he may insist you on sitting in the seat firmly when the horse canter. Stick your legs to the sides of horse's body so they don't move on their own. Let your hands move up and back with the rhythm of horse's head but try not to exaggerate this movement by pumping your hands back and forth. Ride the canter in dressage. Most levels of dressage competitions use canter gait. You must learn this gait if you intend to compete in dressage in the near future and go beyond the introductory level. Body posture. Stick to the following guidelines properly to position your body when you are riding the canter in dressage. Sit deep in your saddle and let your weight be on your seat bones and sink into your hips. Keep your shoulders open, square, and relax. Maintain a flat back with no arch. Keep your elbows close to your body and chip up. Keep your eyes forward looking ahead where you are going. Holding the reins. Hold the reins in your both hands. The reins enter between your thumb and index finger and exit the hand between your ring and pinky finger before heading to the bit. Maintain a relaxed fist of your both hands. Keep your hands two to three inches apart from each other and an inch above the neck of horse. Keep them three inches above the horse's withers. When you perform the canter gait, keep your hands closer to your hips rather than closer to the horse's neck just like they were in the trot gait. Your reins should be a little tight to prepare the horse for canter in dressage. Ask a horse to canter. Ask a horse to change its gait from trot to canter in dressage by moving inside rein that is closest to the center of arena. Give it a slight tot by moving it up, back and out, all at the same time. Keep your outside rein, closest to the rail, slightly slack. Squeeze your outside calf to apply pressure to the horse's body as you move the inside rein. Maintain the pressure until the horse begins to canter and then relax your inside leg by keeping in touch with the horse's body. You cannot use any voice command to encourage the horse to canter in dressage. Moving with the horse. Let your body sink into the canter gait of horse. Flow your body with the rhythm of this three-beat gait and polish the saddle by your rear end as you move with the horse in dressage. Maintain stationary legs and keep them from moving back and forth independently of the horse's body. Chapter 5 Practice more skills with exercises. Learn to maneuver your horse in many ways by practicing some more useful skills with exercises. You may like to stop your horse, once it started moving forward. Some popular exercises that help when participating in equestrian shows and to polish your skills of walk, trot and canter gait are circling, crazy eights, jumping poles in circle, L pattern turn and many more. If you feel much confident about your skills, you can also practice some more balancing exercises like riding a horse with one hand. Become a horseback riding expert by practicing with various jumping styles. Pulling out a stop. Stop is an important maneuver that both the rider and the horse need to know well. It is important in every discipline that gives you considerable control of your equine and makes your eventual dismount a bit less difficult. Follow the given guidelines to bring the horse to a halt position from a walk in equestrian style. In hunt seat, sink your weight into the saddle without bending your shoulders and increase the tension on reins by moving your hands backward. Give your voice command, woe, to the horse at the same time you pull its reins. In dressage, follow the same procedure as the hold on reins is already tight. Pull reins tighter and increase the tension. Do not use voice. The horse should stop without any voice command. Release the tension in the reins when the horse stops walking and comes to a halt. Circling a horse. Circling is an important maneuver that helps you build a communication line with the horse and polishes your skills of riding. Every novice horseback rider learns to ride a horse in a large circle in his training lessons. It is used in arena riding for a variety of reasons by the equestrian riders. 
Hunt seat riders use the skills they develop through circling when negotiating a jumping course. Circling is a part of the test at all levels in dressage. Both hands are used to rein the horse directly when riding a circle on it. Start to ride along the rail in straight direction. Apply tension on the inside rein to circle the horse to the inside of arena and apply pressure with your outside leg. The horse moves away by the pressure of your leg. This encourages it to turn to the inside. In hunt seat, pull the rein out slightly. In dressage, pull the rein back slightly. Continue to maintain the tension on rein and the pressure of leg as the horse turns. Keep applying pressure with both legs to guide it to turn into a circle. When the circle is complete and you are back on rail, reduce the pressure of your legs and move your hands back to the center of your horse. Do not completely remove the leg pressure in both hunt seat and dressage to keep the horse moving. Calling for backup. Asking a horse to walk in reverse is called calling for backup. It is the skill that every horse rider must master. Backing up is not a natural maneuver for horses and thus requires effort by the horse to do it. In equestrian shows, judges often ask for backup and sometimes it becomes a necessity on the trail. Make sure that you ask a horse for backup in a still position. Imagine reversing a car, you cannot reverse it once it is stopped completely. Same is the case with the horses. Asking for a backup during the walk or trot gait confuses the horse and results in facing bad reactions by it. Follow the given guidelines to perform the backup. Gather up the reins in your hands a few inches to create tension towards your hips. So that there is less distance between your hands and the horse's mouth. If this does not work and you see no response from the horse then start applying pressure with your calves on the horse's body and then pull each rein alternatively. When the horse starts taking backward steps then your situation determines how far back you want to go. After reaching your desired location, stop the horse movement by moving your hands forward towards its neck. Also release the leg pressure. Turning the crazy eight. The figure eight is good exercise for the riders practicing for hunt seat and dressage. It helps you to practice coordination between your legs and hands. It helps you figure out how to turn and circle properly. Practice this exercise in any riding arena. Start on a rail and start turning your horse towards the inside as if you are going to ride in a circle. Make your horse go straight after completing half the circle. Next, you ask the horse to change the direction to make a connecting circle in opposite direction. If you made the first circle clockwise then the second circle will automatically become anti-clockwise. Ask your horse to go in straight direction as it completes the second circle. Finally connect the second circle to the first circle in opposite direction and complete the first circle. Practice this eight-figure exercise four to six times. Jumping the pole. Horses are natural at jumping and it is their ability to jump that makes them an amazing animal. Proper jumping involves a good form over fence, the way the horse carries its body over the fence, obeying the rider, in order to take direction, and courage, to jump over something intimidating when asked. Jumping is not the part of dressage shows but for the hunt seat riders it is their ultimate goal. Soaring over the fence or pole is such an exhilarating feeling. It is important to learn asking a horse to jump, maintain body posture when the horse is jumping and learn to tackle multiple jumps. There are two things that composes a successful jump. One is two-point position that is crucial for the jump and a step-by-step -step method to make a simple jump. Two-point position. When the horse is jumping, you need to learn about your body position in the air. It is called two-point position. In one motion, make sure you bend yourself from the hips and not by your waist. Make sure your chest is at 45-degree angle to the body of horse. Put your weight on your heels and let your knees be in contact with the saddle but do not apply pressure to the horse's body. 
Lift yourself up slightly but not completely from the saddle. Keep your hands low almost on the neck of horse. Maintain a straight head with eyes looking forward on your way ahead. Making a jump. You must be wondering how exactly a horse jumps over a fence or pole. Essentially, you aim the horse towards the pole and ask it to keep moving forward then it is the horse that takes the leap. Maintain your confidence on the horse that it can jump. Also beginning with walking and trotting exercises to warm up the horse's body makes it much easier for it to jump a pole. Keep the horse center as it approaches the jumping pole. Control the speed of horse so it approaches a jump in a controlled manner. Make sure your body posture is correct to help the horse jump without any interference. Rest is done by the horse and it jumps the pole. When the horse lands on the ground maintain your body posture and then sit slowly on the saddle. Multiple jump poles. Once you master a single jump then you can practice with multiple jump poles. This practice of jumping multiple poles is called getting on the grid. A grid consists of mostly two to four poles on the ground in a row. The grid pattern is laid out to create measured strides between poles otherwise the horse may have difficulty to decide on the right place to negotiate a jump. The horse needs guidance from the rider on proper number and length of strides between poles. The measured distances in the grid makes it easier for the rider and the horse to jump multiple poles without figuring out the number and length of strides between the poles. Practice around two to four times with multiple jumping poles to get a grip of this skill. The more you practice, the more it is easy for you to jump poles placed in any pattern. It may also become easy for you to figure out the number and length of strides required to make a specific jump on trail riding. Circling Jump Poles Trotting over jump poles lay on the ground in circle making a cross shape, is a good exercise for hunt seat and dressage riders. It is just like your childhood memories of merry-go-round. It helps you practice turning and keeping your horse straight when riding the trot gait. Lay down the pole in a circular pattern and use the help of your instructor for guidance and preparation to practice this exercise under his supervision. You can practice circling jump poles by either the sitting or posting the trot. Lay four poles down in the center of an arena so they form a cross shape but do not touch each other. The ends of a pole should be at least 10 feet apart from each other. In other words, you get a 10-foot hole in the middle of the cross. Approach one of the pole at its center and by trotting over it. Turn your horse so it trots over the center of the next pole. Repeat the same procedure for the next two poles. Continue circling jump poles for at least five minutes. Turning in L pattern. Turning a horse in L pattern is not easy at first but after concentration and practice it becomes second nature of the rider. Practicing this turn during canter gait is considered an advanced level riding skill. You can turn your horse to left or right during canter gait by positioning your hands and legs according to the following directions. Take a feel of the inside rein to turn your horse to the inside of arena that is away from rail. Pull the inside rein out and inside slightly if you are riding hunt seat. Pull the rein back and inside slightly if you are riding in dressage. Apply pressure with your outside leg at the same time. Use more pressure here than you may apply at the trot to encourage the horse to maintain its canter as it turns to the inside. Start with light pressure and keep increasing it until you get the response from the horse. Release the pressure on the inside rein when the turn is complete and the horse return to its normal canter gait. Also release the pressure from your outside leg. Chapter 6 Exploring Equine Care you must be thinking to add a horse to your family. A lifetime equine companion, to take care for and ride. You need to take care of a few things such as a shelter for your horse, feeding timings, and grooming accessories for your horse. Here you may learn how to maintain a healthy horse and find out the symptoms of illness. What precautions to take for your horse and when to call the vet. Horse housing. Proper housing is required for the horse. 
Keeping a horse is not like keeping a dog or a cat as a pet in your house. Horse is bigger in size and has special needs. You can either keep a horse at a boarding facility or it can live with you if you own a horse property. In both cases, you need considerable amount of knowledge to give your horse a comfortable home. Commercial Boarding Facility Commercial establishment of a boarding stable provides limited facilities for the horses such as housing, care, feeding and cleaning stall based on monthly fee. Other boarding stables also offer more care such as exercising and blanketing the horses. The nicer is the stable facility, the more they may charge per month. Do not compromise on necessities for your horse based on low-pricing stables. Take a proper tour of the facility before boarding your horse into it. You must look for the following qualities in a commercial horse stable. Safe and sturdy accommodation. Clean and safe surroundings. Reliable water supply. Quality feed. Good care. 24-7 security. Good riding facilities. Tax storage. If you can find these facilities in a commercial boarding stable for your horse then you can leave it there ensuring a perfect home for it. Rest is required to take care of the paperwork that is signing a boarding agreement. Home Stable A home stable is a perfect option for you if you dream of keeping a horse in your backyard. You must live on the property that is zoned for the horses because you cannot hide a horse in an area which doesn't allow the keeping of livestock. You can create any of the three types of enclosures for your horse. These can be a pasture, a paddock or a box stall. Keeping a horse on your own property is not as fantasizing as it appears. It requires you to invest your time, money and hard work. It is important that you keep the horse property clean and well maintained. Also continue your education about horses by joining horse clubs, subscribing to horse magazines and read books about horses and horse care. By following these instructions you can create a good image on your neighbors as well. Feeding your horse A steady food supply is very important for a horse even more important than humans. Nature has designed horses to spend majority of their time on chewing, swallowing and digesting. An equine digestive system is constantly on the go and processes large quantities of fibrous foods. The quality of feed and the time interval between feeding determines the physical and psychological health of your horse. The best person who can guide you about your horse feed is your veterinarian. He is familiar with your horse individual and nutritional needs. Generally the horse that is ridden for specific disciplines and cattle work require more nutritional food to build muscle strength and endurance. Common horse foods are mentioned below. Hay Hay is basically the foodstuff composed of plants for horses that is cut, dried and baled. It is rich in proteins, calcium and other nutrients. Hay is eaten by most horses. Some people think it is too rich and prefer it for the horses used for the cattle work. It is good feed because it provides roughage in addition to proper nutrition. Roughage keeps the digestive system of the horse to work properly and satisfies its natural urge to chew all the time. Hay cubes Hay cube is a hay concentrated in form of a block. Hay cubes are perfect for old horses because they are easy to chew as the hay break apart quickly in a cube form. It helps improve respiratory system because it possess less dust and dirt in form of cube than raw hay. Hay cubes provide complete nutrition to the old horses with worn down teeth. It is best for the horse who has trouble keeping on weight. Pasture grass. It takes time, knowledge, Hard work and experience to provide your horse a quality grass pasture to graze. Horse maintain a healthy body in a grass pasture. If you own a horse property that already has cultivated green grass pasture then your job is to carefully maintain it and keep it as lush as it is now. 
However if you want to cultivate your own grass pasture for your horse feed then contact your local agricultural agency to assist you in starting and maintaining a green grass pasture. If your pasture does not provide a good amount of quality grass for your horse then you should add hay to its daily feed. Watering your horse. Clean and fresh water is most important for the health of your horse on daily basis. Your horse needs water to stay alive like humans and to maintain a healthy digestive system. There are many ways through which you can water your horse. Water your horse using an automatic watering system in the horse stall. A large bucket that you refill several times a day. A trough that can contain water for a day or two at a time. If you live in an area where the climatic temperature changes can turn water into ice then you need to keep the water supply of your horse from turning into ice. Use the heating system made especially for watering the horses or you can manually break the ice. Preferred method is to use heating system because it lower the effort on your part and as well provides a warm water for the horse by encouraging it to drink easily. Grooming your horse Grooming your horse helps you and the horse to bond with each other before you take it on a ride. Also the horse looks good and you can identify any lumps, bumps, or anything else that should not be there on the horse's body. It helps to keep your horse healthy and clean. If you like grooming horses then it is your luck because horse get dirty easily and require grooming on daily basis. Cleaning a heavy large animal who is milling around in dirt is not an easy job. However you may find grooming your horse as another enjoyable part of owning a horse. Also, horses are great attention seekers. Grooming gear. Cleaning horse is not like we clean ourselves. You may require a number of different tools and gears to assist you in cleaning a horse in a better and efficient way. Assemble all the tools in a tack box or organizer. The minimum number of tools that you should have are mentioned below. Stiff brush. Soft brush. Mane and tail brush. Cloth, sponge or small towel. Sweat scraper. Hoof pick. Rubber curry comb. Shedding blade. Brushing your horse. Horses are very messy and dirt clings to their coat easily. You need to use elbow grease to keep your horse's coat clean and shiny. If the housing of your horse is indoors then it may not get too dirty. Use the grooming tools to clean your horse after tying it. Clean out all the horse's hooves with the hoof pick to remove packed in dirt, manure and rocks. Rub the curry comb in circular motion to bring the dirt to the surface of the horse's coat. If the skin of your horse is thin then proceed gently or skip this step. Dissipate the dirt into air by brushing with stiff brush in short strokes in the direction that the hair grows. Use the soft brush to remove remaining of the dirt from the coat by brushing along the lay of the coat in short strokes. Complete the body grooming process by wiping down the body of horse with the cloth. It gives the coat even more shine. Use the cloth to clean the inside of your horse's nostrils, where the mucus and the dirt tend to accumulate easily. Brush the head of your horse with long and soft brush strokes. Use the mane and tail brush or a soft brush to groom the mane and tail of the horse. Washing Horse Bathing a horse is similar to washing your car. Both are large and require a lot of water, soap and work. Wash your horse only if it is absolutely necessary and only give it a bath twice a month. Too much bathing can strip the coat of horse from its natural oils. Make sure the climate is not too cold and the sun is out. Tie up the horse securely in a wash area where there is a hitching post or cross rails. An access to a garden hose in a non-dirty and non-slip surface is best location for washing your horse. Start from the left side of your horse. Wash and rinse one side of your horse at a time. Run lukewarm water on the horse's legs from garden hose. Slowly move the water hose to the horse's body as the horse adjusts with the water. Wet the body, where the neck joins the head, 
all the way to the rear end of the horse. Apply shampoo to the sponge and start rubbing against the coat of horse to create lather. Work your way down the horse's body. When you get confident of removing the dirt from the horse's coat then start rinsing the shampoo from the coat of your horse by using hose or bucket. After cleansing the horse's body of the sweat and dirt, start to shampoo, condition and rinse the mane of horse. Repeat the same steps to wash the body of horse from the right side. It is time to wash the tail of horse. First rinse it with water then apply shampoo on it. Make sure to work the lather into the tail to clean all the hair of it. Rinse, condition and rinse it again properly. Wash the horse's head by making it wet with a sponge and warm water. Rinse the face with a clean sponge and water. Avoid using shampoo on the face because it is not easy to rinse it off completely. To dry off the horse's body quickly, squeegee the water from its coat by using sweat scrapper in the direction of its hair growth. Then hand walk it in the sun before putting it back into the pasture or paddock. Health care of horse. Horses are delicate creatures in terms of health despite of their size and strength. They need regular preventive care for a healthy body. It is important to find a vet for your horse and take it there for regular checkups. Also finding a qualified and skilled farrier is important to maintain the health of your horse's legs and body. A farrier trims the horse's hair and helps to shoe the horse's hooves. Vaccinating your horse on regular basis keeps your horse healthy and sturdy. Vaccination Horse world is plagued by a number of dangerous and infectious diseases. Good news is that vaccines exist for many of these. Maintain a regular vaccination program for your horse suggested by your veterinarian to protect it from serious illness. The primary vaccinations that your horse must receive are given below. Influenza slash rhinoneumonitis. Equine encephalomyelitis. Tetanus. West Nile virus. Teeth care. The food eaten by a horse is hard to chew so teeth care is vital for horses. The upper jaw of the horse is wider than the lower jaw. Naturally the teeth of the horse keep growing once the upper layer of teeth wears off after chewing hard fibrous food. The upper outside teeth and the lower inside teeth have nothing to wear against as they erupt, resulting sharp points and ridges. These ridges and sharp points restrict the normal side-to-side -side rotary chewing motion of the horse. It results in poor and painful chewing of food resulting in the food droppings from its mouth. Ask your vet to file down these ridges and sharp pointed teeth once or twice a year to make chewing easy and less painful for the horse. It also helps to feel no pain when the tension is increased on the noseband. It is an absolute procedure for preventive care of the horse. When examining teeth, the veterinarian can also identify any other dental problems emerging inside the horse's mouth such as infected teeth or abnormal wear patterns. Recognize illness symptoms. You should learn to recognize the illness symptoms of your horse instead of calling a vet every time your horse sneezes. The study helps you deal with the horse problems at home. You can also learn to monitor the health of your horse. Also it is important to judge the health of your horse before mounting yourself on the saddle for a ride. Look for the following signs to determine the health condition of your horse. Bleeding. Blood in urine. Choking. Colic. Diarrhea. Fever. Inability to stand. Injury. Labored breathing. Painful eye. Refusal to eat. Severe pain. Straining. Swelling. If any one or two of these symptoms appear in your horse then must call your veterinarian urgently. Conclusion. I hope this book was able to help you to learn horseback riding in equestrian style. The next step is to find a teacher or school to help you practice horseback riding and if you feel much confident about your skills then participate in equestrian shows in Olympics.
Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Hit the like button and press the bell icon to get our latest video notification. See you in our next video.